The speed, scale, and quantity of urbanization in China is enormous. Today, I'm 150 kilometers southwest of Beijing in this newly planned district called Xiong'an, currently underdeveloped. Xiong'an is about to be under construction with plans to become one huge city. Forty years ago, less than one-fifth of China's population lived in cities, and the rural population was almost eight times that of the city. Today, the percentage of China's urban population is reaching 60 percent. City number has grown from 193 in 1978 to 672 in 2018. This means China is fast becoming a nation with modern cities. Urbanization holds the greatest potential and momentum for China's development. It's a major project for people's well-being. Big cities emerge from the previous farmland. land. Actually, for this 40 years, the urbanization rate of the Chinese city increased from the 18 percentage to around the 6th percentage. And actually, this actually changed the living standard of Chinese people. It's absolutely amazing, and it's been sustained. It's remained strong for a long term, and that's a lot because of China's urbanization efforts. The fact is, is when you have cities, you're going to have great things happen, but you're also going to have a lot of problems. This is Yanzhou, which belongs to Sanhe City in the Hebei province. Behind me is a bus stop that is nearly empty, but if you come here at 5 in the morning, you'll see throngs of people waiting in line to go to the big city for work. Yeah, in fact, in the Hebei province, nearly 300,000 people make this long commute, spending five hours on the road each day. But the Twin City lifestyle for young people in China is very common. It's happening around all the major cities, with office workers begrudgingly breaking Twin City records for the longest commute time. As China undergoes rapid urbanization, excessive urban expansion brings with it problems such as overcrowding, housing shortage, environmental pollution, and other urban diseases, which inconvenience people's lives and reduce their sense of happiness. China has decided to adopt new development ideas to cure the urban diseases. Prominent issues related to urban diseases will be seriously tackled to continuously enhance the urban environmental quality, people's living standards, and cities' competitiveness, so as to build harmonious, habitable, thriving, unique, and modernized cities. Overcrowding is an issue for the Beijing and even for many mega cities, even for London and New York. Because when people went to a big cities, they try to get more opportunities. They want to make an adventure in the big cities. When you have tens of millions of people in a major city, how is it possible to develop the public services? The fact is, is are there going to be enough jobs? Is there, are they going to really be able to improve their standards of living? When the cities get too big, it becomes much more harder to manage. So my advice is, smaller is okay. It's okay to have fewer people. You have to convince them to go elsewhere. We tend to overlook the effects a big city's growth and expansion has on its surrounding cities, right? There's the siphon effect that causes the populations of surrounding cities to flow out of and into core cities. Gaobeidian is a great example. It's near Beijing, but in 2008, its population was 600,000. Now, only 540,000. And the Gaobeidian is not the only example. So the question is, are expansion and contraction some sort of weird paradox occurring in China, or are they two sides of the same coin of China's urbanization? I think the Shrink City have a positive aspect and also have a negative aspect. Actually, some scholars have invested the 660 Chinese cities, and he found out the 80 
cities, shrink city. So the proportion is about 12 uh, percentage of uh, Chinese cities are shrink cities. Actually, this is related uh, to the process of uh, industrialization and uh, economic development because previous uh, Chinese cities are more about uh, manufacturing industry. And now it tend to be more focused on the service industry. And also this related to the industry revolution uh, promoted by the information technologies. Well, it seems that the land use efficiency in China is very low. You have development of land but growing at a pace of 5.8% annually. But for the cities, the population growth is just at 3%. Many Chinese cities constantly conducting real estate development in pursuit of GDP growth simply turn urbanization into building houses and cities. But their floor areas and increase in population are out of sync, leading to the ghost city phenomenon. In response, the Chinese government proposed for the first time the concept of shrinking cities in key tasks for new urbanization 2019. This means the Chinese government is turning its back on GDPism and will stop focusing unilaterally on urban growth and expansion to ensure that small and medium-sized cities stop expanding inefficiently and blindly. What you have to realize is that uh, the, the shrinking cities is not a bad thing. So China at least has more cities around. And I think also where I see the opportunities are in Western China because that's where they can do more development. The idea of creating certain cities with certain characteristics is a good idea. I also agree with you, a smaller town and a smaller city is also good because in the age of information, we can easily access a job, good living conditions, internet connections, video sites, cities can be get a better economy. China is developing new urbanization among the goals of the new urbanization plans, counter-urbanization is a key focus on solving China's urban problems. Longgong Town in Zhejiang Province, East China, was originally five small fishing villages. The villagers raised funds to build the country's first farmer's town. In 2018, Longgong Town's population exceeded 380,000, and its total output value was about 4.2 billion US dollars. It ranked 17th among the top 100 Chinese towns for its overall strength. It has achieved the transition from being a farmer's town to an extra large town, and finally, a new city. The Chinese government has proposed the building of cities and towns with unique characteristics, and both urbanization and counter-urbanization must be vigorously promoted, so they work together and complement each other. In addition, China is vigorously promoting the building of modernized metropolitan areas and megalopolises. Why did you bring me down here? What, what am I looking at? These pipes. 这边呢，就是咱们的一个综合管廊了。综合管廊呢，就是将燃气啊、电力啊，包括未来的一些交通啊、一些抗震的一些设防的一些系统，全部都会放咱们的综合管廊内。未来新区就是提出了地下一座城
could be uh, produce the new form of the agglomeration. China is building new, modern metropolitan areas and megalopolises. It's logically assigning cities with different features to achieve balanced regional development. In Xiong'an New District, which is over 100 kilometers away from Beijing, a group of top new high-tech companies from Beijing, and a large amount of educational, medical, financial, and scientific research resources are moving here. Not only does it relieve Beijing of non-essential functions, it'll become a new framework for Beijing's development. In the Pearl River Delta, China is building the Greater Bay Area, which will integrate Hong Kong and Macau special administrative regions with cities on the mainland, including Shenzhen and Guangzhou. This area occupies only 0.6% of China's land area, and its population accounts for under 5% of the total population but its contribution to the economy exceeds 12% of the national GDP, making it one of the most open and economically active Chinese regions. In the future, it'll become a vibrant world-class megalopolis. In addition, cities such as Nanchang, Nanjing, Xi'an, Zhengzhou, Wuhan, and Chengdu are expediting the building of modernized metropolitan areas. By 2035, China is expected to have several globally influential metropolitan areas. Focus on city, but of course understand that you have to think about the people, improve living standards for all people, but in the sense that everything has to be fair. You can never forget about the people. We started to focus on the need of the people. So for the current urban planners, they are more about uh, the people, how people live in the city, what the people need in the city. And uh, in particular for the cities, we try to use the spatial structure of the cities to integrate all kinds of people together to make uh, the social more stability, more harmony. China's urbanization has entered middle and later periods. It's no longer simply for the urban migration of farmers. The ultimate goal of urbanization is to improve people's living standards. The Chinese government emphasizes and focuses more on the equalization of the basic urban-rural public services. It also focuses more on the environment, habitability, and the continuity of historical heritage, as well as enhancing people's sense of gain and happiness. The satisfaction of urban and rural residents' material and cultural needs and the free and blanket development that are beneficiary to urban and rural residents will serve as the starting point and final destination that encourage urban-rural socioeconomic development. I wish I could get into a good university. I hope I can make some more money. Yeah, we all have that wish. I wish I could have a beautiful home. Oh, I wish my family stays healthy. This is a wishing wall. And there are many wishes here about Xiong'an, but I have a few wishes of my own. Of course, I hope that Beijing alleviates its overcrowding and becomes less polluted, but I wish the children here have a better educational opportunity than before, that it equals that of Beijing, and that the quality of life here equals that of Beijing. I hope all these dreams come true. Xiong'an is the future.